Gabriel, we have twins! cried Valerie over the phone. They were born small, only 2.5 kilograms each, but they're healthy and they're so cute! Tears of joy streamed from the young mother's eyes. Finally, she held her babies in her arms. Valerie's pregnancy was a difficult ordeal. Firstly, the father of her children, Gabriel, was initially against their birth. Valerie and Gabriel worked together. She was an accountant, and he was a driver at a small company. It wouldn't be accurate to say that an all-consuming passion or love had ignited between them. They were just young and saw each other often. That's how their relationship started. Before that, Gabriel had broken up with his fiancée, even though their wedding date had already been set. Debbie had cheated on him with their mutual friend, and Gabriel found out when he saw her kissing him in a car. The wedding was naturally cancelled, and Gabriel was looking for an opportunity to forget and distract himself. Valerie, new accountant in his company, happened to be in the right place at the right time. The young woman never enjoyed any particular popularity among the male population. Her bright red hair sticking out in all directions, and freckles all over her face made her look like Pippi Longstocking. Plus, she was overweight, which she fought with since school time with varying success. Sometimes she won, sometimes cakes and chocolates did. Gabriel was the first guy with whom she had a real, long-lasting relationship. Naturally, Valerie plunged into it headfirst, falling in love with all her heart. At first, Gabriel tried to hide his relationship with Valerie. He would wait for her after work behind the office. They wouldn't appear in crowded places. They would either go to the river or sit in a gazebo in the park. However, since they lived in a small town, everything soon became obvious. Gabriel's acquaintances would ask him about his relationship with the new accountant. And the guy, despite his ex fiance would brag to everyone about his great love for Valerie. These rumours reached Valerie as well. She was very flattered that Gabriel boasted of their passionate love everywhere. The girl believed his real love. Or, to be more accurate, she took wishful thinking for reality. Valerie was originally from a neighbouring village. In town, she had graduated from vocational school and worked living with her aunt, an unmarried elderly woman. They lived well, each on their own. Her aunt was used to being alone, so Valerie's constant presence bothered her a little. However, the fact that Valerie brought home bags full of groceries and cooked for them herself somewhat softened her not-so-welcoming attitude. When her aunt found out that her niece was dating a guy, she was happy. She had a chance to marry off her beloved relative. One day, Nina found a pregnancy test with two stripes. And recently, the woman often noticed that her niece was nauseous in the mornings. But the girl didn't mention anything about the wedding. All this prompted her aunt to get to know Valerie's prospective fiancé's family. And it turned out that Nina knew Gabriel's mother. They had studied in parallel classes. The woman did not hesitate to visit her future relative. Gabriel's mother worked as a saleswoman in a store. It turned out that Gabriel's mother, Mrs. Travers, did not know that her son had found a girlfriend, and the fact that she was pregnant plunged Mrs. Travers into shock. The conversation with Nina gave rise to a serious conversation with Gabriel. Son, it turns out you have a fiancé, and I still thought you were mourning for Debbie, expressed his mother. Fiancé? No. I'm just going out with a girl, but it's nothing serious, and Debbie has nothing to do with this at all. Nothing serious, you say? Then why does the whole town know about it? And why did her aunt come to talk about the wedding? The mother did not give up. About the wedding? Strange we were not thinking about any wedding. The man was bewildered. You're the one who hadn't thought, but your Valerie is pregnant. And she, of course, is thinking about the wedding. I think it's time for me to meet your future wife. So Gabriel found out that he would become a father in the foreseeable future. Valerie, why didn't you tell me you were pregnant? Gabriel asked at the next meeting. I was afraid. The woman avoided his gaze. What if you don't want this child? What am I supposed to do then? 
At the moment, Gabriel could not say no to her because all their relatives already knew about Valerie's pregnancy. Anyway, a month later, Valerie married Gabriel. They did not have a wedding. They just got married and had a festive dinner in a large gazebo in the yard of Gabriel's parents. At a family meeting, it was decided that the young couple would live with Gabriel's parents. They had a large two-story house in which there was a place for their son and his wife. Gabriel's older sister and her husband had long lived in the city, and of course she came to her brother's wedding. Gabriel, she took her brother aside, I don't understand how you could replace Debbie for her. The sister looked at Valerie, who in a light beige dress seemed immeasurable. The mother-to-be had visibly gained weight, her freckles were even more visible on her pale face, and her grey eyes seemed faded in the sun, almost transparent. Debbie cheated on me. It was her choice, not mine, Gabriel answered. I saw her yesterday when I went to the store, Kate said quietly. She is very sorry it turned out that way. She swears that she had nothing with Carlos, that she loves only you. Have you even talked to her? What am I supposed to talk to her about? I saw her kissing Carlos in the car. Kate, they made a fool out of me. Gabriel was indignant. And now you're making a fool out of yourself, the sister exclaimed. She categorically did not like this unremarkable quiet girl, who was no match for Debbie, with whom Kate had long been friends. Meanwhile, Valerie was on cloud nine of happiness. She was marrying her beloved man. She was absolutely not worried that her husband's sister was looking at her unkindly. That Gabriel himself was sullen, and not at all like a happy newlywed. The young woman simply enjoyed her happiness. She really loved Gabriel, and besides, she was pregnant with his child. The mother-in-law treated her pregnant daughter-in-law well, especially when an ultrasound showed that she was expecting twins. Gradually, Mrs. Travers learned from Valerie about how they met with Gabriel and how their relationship developed. It became increasingly clear that her son married her out of spite for his ex fiance Gabriel remained completely indifferent to Valerie. He was not interested in her well-being, did not kiss her, did not hug her unnecessarily, did not show his feelings. He also tried not to mention the future babies, as if the mere mention of them was unpleasant to him. After a while, Gabriel began to stay at work more and more often. The young wife seemed not to notice any of this. She would have continued to live in her magical invented world if one day an attractive blonde had not approached her in the store. Valerie knew that strange woman had once dated Gabriel. She was flattered that Gabriel married her instead of Debbie. True, she did not know what caused this. Yes, now I understand Gabriel, the stranger said mockingly, examining Valerie from all sides. Valerie shrunk under her gaze. She knew she didn't look her best, a blurry figure, shapeless dress, freckles and pigmented spots on her face. Not the most attractive appearance. What do you mean? Valerie asked. I understand why he's in no hurry to come home, the woman laughed. You know who I am, don't you? I know you're my husband's ex-girlfriend, Valerie said, trying to remain calm. Well, not quite an ex, Debbie said, smiling at her interlocutor. Gabriel was wrong to marry you. You have nothing in common. What do you mean, nothing? What about the kids? Valerie exclaimed. Well, except for the kids. But does he really need them? You decided everything yourself. And in vain. Valerie stopped listening after that. She felt sick. Her stomach ached so much that she barely made it home, where she was picked up by an ambulance. And now she was calling him from the maternity hospital to glad him with giving birth to their sons. Gabriel, come over to us, Valerie asked her husband. You can see the kids. They look a lot like you. Gabriel muttered something into the phone and the connection was cut. Valerie tried not to think about what had happened. She had their sons in her arms. He wouldn't abandon his babies. So, in a couple of days, 
Valerie returned home with her sons. They named the boys Kevin and George, after Valerie and Gabriel's fathers. The babies were very restless, and they each had their own schedule. When Kevin fell asleep, George woke up and demanded to be fed. As soon as George calmed down, Kevin started to cry and demand attention. Valerie was exhausted. She was torn between two babies. If it weren't for her mother-in-law's help, she wouldn't have coped. Mrs. Travers took time off to help her daughter-in-law with the children. Then she arranged with Valerie's mother, and they took turns looking after the grandchildren, helping Valerie. The young father tried not to approach the children unnecessarily. He still worked and came home late. He didn't share where he spent his spare time. Son, said Mrs. Travers, filling Gabriel's bowl with soup, what are you doing? The whole town is buzzing that you're involved with Debbie again. Wasn't it enough that she cheated on you? And that you have a wife and little sons at home? Doesn't bother you at all? No, it doesn't bother me. Gabriel looked at his mother without averting his gaze. I don't care about them at all. I don't love Valerie. And as for the kids, well, she wanted them, so let her take care of them. What do you mean you don't love her? His mother didn't give up. Why did you marry her then? It just happened. I was foolish and wanted to get back at Debbie. I got married for nothing, I admit it. What do we do now? Your Debbie won't change. She'll keep looking at other men. And what about Valerie and the kids? This is your children and my grandchildren. Your own blood. Mum, leave me alone, will you? I don't know what to do next. We messed up. And now, Valerie standing behind the door clamped her mouth shut with her hand so as not to scream. She heard everything her husband said. She tried not to remember that conversation with Debbie, tried to convince herself that it was all untrue, that Gabriel loved her. But it turns out that it wasn't like that at all. Debbie wasn't lying. Valerie, what are you doing? Where are you going in the middle of the night? Mrs. Travers watched at a loss as her daughter-in-law tearfully threw her and her children's things into a large travel bag. I'm going to my parents. I can't stay here any more. He doesn't love me. He's dating her. The young woman sobbed. Mrs. Travers tried to calm her down, but she didn't know what to say. Valerie, your father drinks and your grandmother can't walk. They're all in the same house. How long will you manage with the children? Don't make things up. Everything will work out somehow. Where will you go? The mother-in-law tried to persuade her daughter-in-law to stay. Stay, Gabriel said confidently. I made a mess. I'll go. Both his mother and wife turned to him. Where will you go? Valerie asked her husband. What difference does it make to you? We won't file for divorce yet. Live here. My mother will help you with the children, and the conditions are better here. And I'll rent a place to live. I work, after all. I'll also help you with money for the children, Gabriel said. Yes, Valerie, stay, please, Mrs. Travis repeated. Let the one who caused this mess clear it up. Gabriel left that same evening, but he never rented a place. He just moved in with Debbie, his former girlfriend, who had her own apartment. Everyone in town gossiped that he had left his wife and newborn children and moved in with his mistress. Many didn't understand why Gabriel's mother took his wife's side, not her son's. Debbie didn't like it either. Gabriel, but that's foolish, she protested. We're living together like a married couple, but I can't go to your place. Valerie and her children are there. Why won't your mother kick them out? Who does she love more, her own son or some other woman? It's not about Valerie, it's about the children. My mother is attached to her grandchildren. They're still little. She worries that Valerie will have a hard time alone, so she's trying to help her. Gabriel justified his mother. She should be trying to help you instead. Your parents aren't poor people, and we have to squeeze into my tiny apartment while your Valerie is almost landlady of their two-story house. Debbie was angry, but she couldn't do anything. Everything was decided for her. Meanwhile, Valerie gradually began to come to her senses. In principle, she didn't have time to relax and fall into depression. The babies had started teething. 
and there was even less peace in the house. Kevin and George now slept exclusively outside or in someone's arms, so the household members had a hard time. But the children were growing up little by little, and life was improving. Gabriel, as promised, gave half of his salary to his wife and children. He still felt guilty. He rarely came home. He was ashamed to look Valerie and his mother in the eye. The perpetually screaming infants didn't inspire him, either. However, it turned out that living on his own was not as sweet as he had hoped. Firstly, the money he earned was catastrophically insufficient, especially since Debbie was used to living without denying herself anything. The girl also worked, but believed that her salary was hers alone, while Gabriel's salary was joint. Debbie wasn't an ideal housewife, either. She didn't cook three-course lunches like his mother did. She often forgot to wash and iron her beloved's clothes. In general, she didn't rush to surround Gabriel with care and love. She waited for him to do that for her. But the man thought that by leaving his family, he had shown Debbie that life with her was his conscious choice. That should have made her happy, in his opinion. However, it was clearly not enough for Debbie. Quarrels between them became more frequent. Debbie wanted not just to live with Gabriel, but to be the full-fledged mistress of his house, although it was his parents' house. I think it's time for Valerie to go home, Gabriel. You're not planning on living with her, are you? Debbie asked him. Of course, I'm not planning on living with her. I live with you. However, I'm not going to throw Valerie and the kids out either. As I've already said, I'll earn for us. Valerie and the kids can live with my parents. But why? Debbie exclaimed. Because she's my wife, and her kids are my kids too. Well, then get a divorce, and let her go in all directions. Firstly, no one will divorce us until the children turn one. Second, even after the divorce, they won't stop being my sons. I'm not going to kick them out, especially since it's my parents' house, and my mother suggested they live there. This can't go on forever, Debbie protested, although they had only been living together for four months. Within a year, Kevin and George had calmed down a bit. They started sleeping peacefully at night, and they started walking in different directions. It was fortunate that the yard was fenced, otherwise the boys would have to be searched all over the town. One day, Gabriel and his father built a sandbox and hung swings on the plot. Now the kids had a place to play. After hard work, Mrs. Travis invited everyone to the table. You've lost weight, son. She looked sadly at Gabriel. I have to work a lot. Sometimes I don't have time to eat, the man replied, lowering his eyes. He didn't want to tell his mother that Debbie didn't cook at all, and they usually ate semi-finished products. When Gabriel had time, he cooked food for himself and Debbie. However, lately work had increased. The season so he often just stayed hungry because he didn't have time to cook. When he returned home, he often found Debbie sleeping and the fridge was empty. Sometimes he just didn't have the strength to cook or wait delivery and he got sleep hungry. At this moment, Valerie entered the dining room. Gabriel hadn't seen her in a long time. When he visited his parents, the woman tried not to cross paths with him. Gabriel, of course, didn't insist on meeting her either. So now, Gabriel even whistled in surprise. His wife had changed beyond recognition. No, Valerie still had unruly red hair, but now it was tied back in a thick braid. Her face was still covered with freckles, but now they were not so bright and, on the contrary, gave the young woman an irresistible charm. And Valerie had lost weight. Early in the spring, when they last saw each other, he also noticed it. But then Valerie was wearing a bulky jacket and it wasn't so noticeable. Now, a slender, attractive, red-haired woman, with huge grey eyes, like the sky before a storm, stood in front of Gabriel. To say that he was surprised would be an understatement. He looked at his wife and didn't recognise her. "'You've changed,' he said, and hurried to add, "'For the better.' 
and he himself realised how futile his words sounded. It was difficult to call them a compliment. Thank you, Valerie said quietly. Her eyes shone with warm light and calmness. She had found herself as a mother. For now, that was enough for her. Maybe the boys need something else. Tell me, don't be shy. I'm always happy to help. Gabriel didn't take his eyes off Valerie. She smiled and Gabriel smiled back. Honestly speaking, I came to get water for them. But let's go to the kids. You meet them better, the woman said. Gabriel went out to the street with Valerie. It was the first time he had spent over an hour walking with the kids. He even talked and joked around with them. You know, Paul, said Gabriel's mother, watching from the window as her son tossed Kevin and George up in the air one by one. The boys, Gabriel and Valerie, all laughed heartily. I think they can still get along. He's not having an easy time with Debbie, Gabriel's father agreed. It's one thing to date, but living together is an entirely different story. She's a lady who wants money, but Gabriel's too proud to admit it. Mrs. Travers nodded. She knew the best friend of their eldest daughter very well. The wise mother knew what Debbie was after and understood that Valerie would be the best wife for her son, but unfortunately it was not up to her to choose. Gabriel left in the evening. His meeting with Valerie awakened old memories and something else he didn't quite understand yet. Why did it take so long? Debbie protested. We were supposed to go to karaoke today. I called you a hundred times and you kept ignoring me. Do you want to go back to your fat, ugly ex? Tell me. Listen, Debbie. I'm so tired. Let's not argue right now. And I don't want to go anywhere. Let's stay home, watch a movie or something. My mum gave me some cabbage pies, Gabriel suggested. You know, Gabriel, I think it's time for you to retire. I've been waiting for you all day, getting ready, dressing up to go to the cinema. Debbie was angry. If you don't want to come, I'll go by myself. And so it turned out. Gabriel stayed home while Debbie went to the karaoke bar. Just wait, I'll show you. The girl hissed, dialing Carlos's number. Every weekend, Gabriel now spent with his wife and kids. He came up with all sorts of excuses for Debbie, and she became more and more upset. Eventually, Gabriel said that he just wanted to see his sons grow up. Debbie didn't talk to him for several days. If you want this so badly, go back to your wife and see them every day, she said angrily. I'll think about it. Gabriel replied as if in jest. Meanwhile, the relationship between Gabriel and Valerie gradually improved. They talked about their children, life, common acquaintances, and plans for the future. Maybe we should get a divorce? Valerie asked one day. You're living with another woman. Maybe you want to make it official with her. The kids are grown up now, so we can get divorced without any problems. If you'd like to. Let's not rush whispered the man quietly. After all, we have two children. Maybe we will raise them together. Gabriel looked directly into Valerie's eyes. She did not look away. She remained silent, although her heart was pounding in her chest. Yes, she still loved her husband. She loved him, despite everything that had happened between them. And even though her friend, whom she had once confided in, had criticised her, saying that she had no pride. For Valerie, love was more important. The young woman was going to use all the chances that life gave her. Valerie knew that she would only be happy with Gabriel. And pride? Well, then she had no pride. That evening, Gabriel did not go home. He called Debbie, saying that he urgently needed to go on a business trip. She probably didn't believe him. The man didn't clarify. I am cheating on my mistress with my own wife. He thought, falling asleep in Valerie's embrace. As for Valerie, she was glad that, at the moment, Gabriel was with her, that love and adoration could be read in his eyes. That was enough for the woman. The young man's parents pretended that nothing strange had happened. 
The next day, Gabriel came to get his things. Debbie was furious. She was figuring things out, but then abruptly calmed down, and from there, Gabriel packed his things in silence. Without saying goodbye, she closed the door behind him, picked up her phone, and dialed a familiar number. If one man couldn't afford to provide her with a beautiful life, she would have to let another do it. Recently, Carlos suggested she accompany him. He was flying to Turkey for a vacation. Debbie hesitated because she wasn't certain about her relation with Gabriel, but now she agreed without hesitation. Seeing Gabriel with the suitcase, Valerie threw herself at him, crying with happiness. And again, Gabriel felt like a hero, giving happiness to his family. His parents watched the family reunion, smiling. "'You were right, dear,' the elderly man remarked. Gabriel did come back to his wife. "'I'm always right, dear,' his wife smiled. "'Yes, Carlos, I will marry you,' Debbie answered her companion, smiling as if nothing had happened. After a few minutes, looking at the beautiful diamond ring given to her by the man. "'And love? Well, it's not always a guarantee of happy relationships,' Debbie thought, staring into the distance." Without love, it's somehow easier, not so stressful. Meanwhile, on the other side of Earth, Valerie was thinking oppositely. Love is the most important thing. My love saved our marriage. She was basking in her husband's embrace and still couldn't believe her happiness. Each of these women was right in her own way.